From space, we don't see the borders that divide us, the arbitrary lines in the sand that have kept humans at war somewhere throughout our history. But it is a sad constant. What has changed dramatically is the technology of war, which inevitably led us down the road to nuclear weapons, the most devastating instruments of war ever devised by human beings. Hello, I'm Miles O'Brien. Welcome to Los Alamos. As you know, this is the birthplace of the atomic bomb. Over the years, the weapons devised here have literally changed the course of human history. And in fact, now it is no longer pie in the sky thinking to imagine a world without nuclear weapons. So what does that mean at a place like Los Alamos? It's not what you think. To be clear, the laboratory does not make nuclear weapons policy for the nation. It provides the technical solutions to make the policies possible. There are a lot of smart, busy people doing amazing cutting-edge research here, including 3D computer modeling that took me inside the fundamental forces that power our sun, our universe for that matter. So the mission here is the same as it ever was, to provide the nation with a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deterrent using the best science, technology, and engineering available. We still have the mission of providing the deterrent for the country. You know, somebody at the end of the day has to be able to say to the president and to the Congress, you can count on these systems. Today at Los Alamos, the work has changed significantly from the early days. They're not designing or building new weapons here anymore, nor are they testing bombs beneath the Nevada desert. That ended in 1992. Nathaniel Morgan is part of the team that helps make the 3D visualizations by constantly improving the computer models used with experimental data that replicate the real world in cyberspace. To do that accurately, they employ some of the fastest supercomputers in the world. Nuclear weapons are very nonlinear. They have very complex areas of physics. They operate from room temperature to uh, temperatures at the core of the sun. So there's a wide range of physics, wide range of areas of difficulty, and it is a very challenging problem and requires a tremendous amount of computing power to solve the equations describing uh, those regimes. Because nuclear weapons operate in unprecedented conditions, extreme temperatures and pressures and blindingly fast speeds, how best to ensure the weapons, as they get older, are safe and will work if needed? or not if their security is ever compromised. For one thing, world-class supercomputing. The advanced computing capability plays a role in um, helping scientists uh, simulate and understand the designs of nuclear devices and allows us to be able to certify nuclear weapons without actually testing it uh, at the Nevada test site. Los Alamos computer scientists have developed three-dimensional full-motion computer models that predict the behavior of weapon materials and components and ultimately the overall performance of a nuclear weapon. These simulations combine data gleaned from nuclear tests and from hundreds of individual experiments on everything from the most basic materials like metals, plastics and foams to the most complex weapon components such as plutonium and high explosives. To make sure the lab scientists and engineers are getting the right answer, they do a lot of non-nuclear testing. It can give them a glimpse of what happens to the components of weapons as they age and are modified over time. The new data is used to update the computer model. So what goes on in here now? So this is where we do our dynamic experiments. Dynamic indeed. Frank Merrill showed me the Los Alamos Neutron Science Center, or LANCE. It takes pictures using protons. They are accelerated by magnets over half a mile in this pipe, then focused on a conventional explosion that happens much, much faster than a blink of an eye. We managed to, uh, to, to take pictures at uh, rates of about a millionth of a second uh, uh, and look inside of these systems and, uh, and understand what's going on. And what, what do you learn when you do that? So we, we learn how high explosives detonate and the properties of high explosives as they detonate, how metals, when they're in contact with detonating high explosives, how they break up, how they fail, and, and the consequences of that failure. The model is further refined at the Dual Axis Radiographic Hydrodynamic Test, or DART, facility. Here, they create a non-nuclear mock-up of a nuclear device. 
Two powerful accelerators generate X-rays that capture images as the simulated plutonium pit implodes. We use large six foot diameter, two and a half inch thick steel vessels to contain the explosive experiment. And what does that really do for us? Well, first of all, it prevents the hazardous materials from contaminating the environment. Second, it actually prevents the firing point itself from being contaminated. We take the electrons, we accelerate them to very high energy, they reach a velocity uh, that's close to the speed of light, and then we slam them into a target to generate high energy x-rays. The high energy x-rays that we generate then, just like a dental x-ray, propagate through a mock nuclear device, allowing us to take pictures of that mock nuclear de device. With one of the axes, we take a single picture, basically stop the motion of the materials. With the other axis, we take four pictures, so we actually can see how the materials move as a function of time. And in fact, gives us much more information to be able to compare with our simulations and certify the stockpile in the absence of testing. DART is a one-of-a-kind facility. There is no place else in the world currently where we have two axes to take X-ray images of mock nuclear devices. Reliance on non-nuclear testing and computer modeling increases the degree of difficulty for the scientists, engineers, and technicians charged with managing and assessing the aging stockpile. Denise Korzekwa is in charge of making many of the components used in experiments. Because we have to find ways of being able to test these materials without underground testing. We have to make much smaller scale test items. We need to look at clever ways of doing things because our restrictions on what we can do are different now than they used to be. All of this work and expertise is funneling into a brand new building here at Los Alamos the first nuclear research facility built in the U.S. in 30 years, specifically designed for increased safety, security, and for better safeguarding the environment. Ken Lanes gave me a tour while it was still a construction site. This Why is it important to have labs like this? We still have to take care of the stockpile that we have. We have to be agile in case there's ever an event. Other countries are not uh, following the same route that we are in terms of reducing our stockpile. There's still a lot of interest in uh, nuclear materials, not only for weapons purposes, but also for medical isotope research and for nuclear power. The lab plays a vital role, helping stop rogue states or terrorist organizations from developing their own capability to build nuclear weapons. It takes a, a weapons laboratory to understand a weapons laboratory. So as other nations may decide to become proliferant in their viewpoint, it takes the expertise and the facilities here to understand what it is they're actually doing. When I look back at the Cold War, it's to me very clear that the presence of nuclear weapons brought a sense of caution into international decision making that hadn't been there prior to, to the Second World War. And while nuclear weapons have not stopped warfare, we have not seen warfare on a global scale since the Second World War. I believe that's a good thing for the world. It's something I've been willing to commit my career to. And you think the work that has been done here since the Manhattan Project has made that a reality? Absolutely, absolutely. Imagine that you have a world without any nuclear weapons. Who are the people that are best able to help make sure that it remains that way? I claim it's the people who work in this program. 